So I'd like to welcome on stage uh, Irina to take us through to the next session. Irina, come on up. I think that's the middle, right? Ah, perfect. Hi, my name is Irina Kurlanova, and I'm the global director of Our Solution Partners. My vision within this company is to make Spryker a partner first organization because my heart beats for partners. So let me introduce you to our next speaker, Rami Atari from Luminous Labs, who's going to talk about the topic on utilizing MVP approach to realize time to value. Welcome on stage. <laughs> Oh, it's up there, perfect. My first goal is to make it up the stairs without tripping, so I did that well. Um, yeah, thank you for the clap. So uh, I found out I was doing this on Monday. Um, so our head of sales was actually supposed to be up here. Uh, he is sick, so uh, he owes me a big favor now, uh, which is great because everybody knows sales and marketing typically have a bigger budget than uh, uh, my team. Um, so let me start by giving you guys a little intro on myself first. Uh, Luminos, and then we'll just go from there. Uh, so Luminos Labs is essentially a, a, a solution implementer. We've worked with a lot of different e-commerce platforms. Um, we've been around for around uh, 10 years. So uh, we've done both e-commerce and other uh, platforms, so PIMs, OMSs, DAMs, basically the whole spectrum. And uh, I've been at Luminos for around three years. And um, uh, yeah, I've worked in e-commerce for, for a while now. So three years at Luminos. I used to work at a different uh, digital agency where we did uh, a couple other platforms like Magento and Hybris, which are now Adobe and SAP, so it's been a while. Um, and I, I was actually gonna have a great profile pic of me chugging a beer and cooking hot dogs, but our marketing team wouldn't let me put that up there, but I think that tells you guys the type of person I am. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's basically myself and Luminos. And then we're here today to talk about uh, MVP. Um, I'm happy to hear uh, that we've had a couple of presenters say MVP a couple of times, uh, but for a couple of folks that could be kind of new. I know I didn't really didn't know what MVP was until actually I got to Luminos. Um, I mean, MVP, I always think about sports, uh, most valuable player is what I always think, um, but that's not what we're talking about here. So in this case, uh, MVP is our minimal viable product. Uh, so essentially what that, uh, what that means is it's the simplest solution um, that uh, gives your customers a sufficient um, tangible product. So uh, what, the way I like to think about it is essentially it's, it's your uh, product and uh, without a lot of the bells and whistles. Um, so instead of trying to introduce a bunch of additional features or integrations that add a lot of complexity to the project is uh, essentially keep it simple. Keeping it simple so that way we can uh, achieve our, our timelines and our budgets. Um, and, uh, and not put the whole project at risk. So I know I'm saying that, and you're probably thinking, well, that's obvious, that's common sense. Why wouldn't you want to keep something simple? Why wouldn't you want to stay within budget? But it's pretty difficult. Um, so the whole thing, oh, also, I've never worn a mic like this before, so let you guys know. Right here? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, oh. All right, this is going well. Matt owes me big time for this. All right, better? Okay. Perfect. So what makes it difficult is, is actually this shift in, in mindset of a company. And um, uh, one thing I'll bring up is I heard it used yesterday during our partner uh, mini boot camp. I think Michael said it, and it stuck with me that uh, uh, e-commerce uh, is no longer a project. It's a, uh, it's a product. So, so thank you for that quote. Um, and I couldn't agree anymore with it. And that's essentially our men mentality too and the mentality of a MVP type of project. Uh, so the, the reason for that, I mean, is your requirements and needs change from today to tomorrow, next month, a year from now. So they continuously, continuously keep changing. And the biggest thing we have to get used to here when we're going towards like MVP approaches, instead of trying to get one large project and you're thinking of it of a, uh, of a huge capital expense, that's more of thinking about it of a uh, uh, operating expense. And I've heard uh, a couple of folks talk about that up here that, you know, they reiterate and reiterate, and, and that's that mindset uh, shift. So instead of trying to launch 
a huge project, a website that has everything we need on it is essentially bringing it down, uh, keeping it simple, and essentially starting small. Um, and that's kind of the, like, the ultimate theme and goal of having an MVP approach. And, and we've really noticed a lot of our uh, clients and customers, honestly, going, going down that path. So when it comes to a MVP project, um, the first thing, how to launch your MVP. So this is one of the, the biggest things. And uh, I think this is the biggest hurdle that uh, we have to get through at the beginning of a project. So I think a lot of us have probably, if, as, long as, you, uh, as long as you've been in the industry, have been involved in those long, convoluted discoveries that honestly none of us really enjoy. But uh, we've had to do them. Um, and, and, and that's basically the start, is, is how do we start small so we can launch quickly? And it starts with that discovery. So instead of having this very long discovery, it, uh, the goal is ultimately to go in and try to define that MVP up front. And that's pretty difficult because, uh, I mean, there's multiple stakeholders, multiple business units, and essentially, they all have their different uh, priorities. So the big thing is, is essentially getting that, that buy-in up front in discovery on, on what are your MVP items that essentially will help meet the goals of the project. And those things can be simple. So I know we saw like a quick order pad before. Um, but uh, things like that, like we, we that come up a lot in B2B, quick order pads, bulk order pads, instead of going through and getting all the bells and whistles, what's the simplest way to implement this? Well, we need a SKU, we need a quantity, we're probably gonna pass back an image, probably gonna pass back a product description. Let's just keep it simple so we don't have to keep adding to it and then go from there. So that's basically the whole concept of, of uh, uh, MVP. Uh, and I keep saying, I wanna say that so that we don't think it's, uh, um, let's not include features, but simplify features, essentially. So that's the first part of it, is getting to discovery, defining your scope. Oh, I've been waiting for this, man, for a while. So essentially defining your scope, oh, that sounds way better, um, at the very beginning of the, of the project. Okay, so you've gone through discovery, everybody agrees, everybody, uh, um, uh, knows what we're doing for this MVP type of project. You go through the build and now you're live. So this is the part to me that's probably the fun part of the project is uh, now that you're live is what are you gonna do next essentially? And the reason why this is fun is that uh, we've gone through and we got to negate all that guesswork that goes up front. So there's a lot of guesswork and I'm not saying that um, folks don't know their customers and uh, the needs they have but Customers' needs change on a daily basis, essentially. So that need today is gonna to be different in a month or two months, three months from now. So uh, what this kind of promotes is that your site's live. Let's get that out of there. Uh, your site's live in a quick manner. And essentially, this allows you now to uh, uh, start using the site, have customers start using it, collecting your data, looking at the analytics, uh, getting feedback directly from your customers, getting feedback from internal team members, I know a lot for B2B sites, salespeople have a lot of feedback always. Um, I shouldn't say that, probably in a room that has a lot of salespeople in it, but um, it helps. So essentially, is now you're making decisions that are relying on data versus a lot of a guesswork. So this is again where it gets a lot, it gets, uh, it's a lot of fun and you can start kind of breaking down and figuring out what really do we need to improve on. That uh, bulk uh, order page, maybe it doesn't get that much traction. Maybe it's just enough and customers are like, this is perfect. Or maybe there are some things that we need to add to it. Um, but this is the opportunity now to find that out and find out how big of a priority it is for customers. So once that happens, essentially now we get into building that backlog. But the best part is now we can prioritize based off the data that we know. So at this point, uh, that's when you kind of go through your backlog, you go through agile development and, and different iterations, which again, sounds like a lot of folks who are on Spryker are doing, which is, which is perfect. And then kind of our perspective on, on uh, MVP and, and the landscape, what we're noticing. And I can tell you from my experience too, from 10 years ago to now, it's totally different. I, I remember always being on these projects where discovery could be one to two months long and, and um, uh, continuous scope changes. And honestly, the relationship with the clients uh, was very, very taxing. So you go through this, you go through the build, there's a lot of back and forth, and they're like, why is this project taking six months, seven months, eight months? Um, so it's just not great for the relationship. So, uh, and, I, and I think 
customers and, and clients have noticed that. And most of our clients nowadays have actually switched towards this MVP approach. So they've avoided spending months on um, uh, complicating requirements or trying to reinvent the wheel and blowing through their budget and focusing on essentially just getting live and saying goodbye to like these huge phase one projects, which I think now is like taboo to say phase one. So uh, I think that that's honestly helped a lot. So it's, it's given clients the ability to take uh, essentially a very limited budget um, and then uh, uh, launch their site faster. So your speed to market is a lot quicker and then essentially they're seeing their, their ROI a lot quicker. So um, I think this is, it was very eye opening to see that from going from all these older projects that again had those long phase ones to now as we're launching, sometimes it's kind of bare bones but then it's very quick. We're getting right into that backlog now we're trying to improve the site and we have some data to help us figure out what we have to do. And because I was talking about MVP and being simple and quick, I took that approach with this presentation. So, and I knew we had a break coming up. I didn't want you guys to be sitting down for so long. Um, so we have a lot of time left over if there's uh, any questions. Yep. Oh, we can share this mic. So you talked a lot about the data and how um, customers need to look at the data to then decide what to do next. Um, any advices that you have which data to look at? Because having data is not the same as being able to make decisions based on data. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And um, yeah, sometimes that can be difficult to do because if you have the data there, it's, it's going down into uh, the actual analysis and seeing if that, honestly, if that analysis might be biased or not. I mean, there could be opportunities where, or times where um, maybe you see low traffic on a page. It's not so much that uh, the, uh, the feature is, is lacking, um, and it uh, uh, could be more of just uh, placement and how somebody gets to that, uh, that page or that feature. So th that one's a little difficult. I think it's on a case-by-case -case basis, but uh, the biggest thing most of our clients have gotten is direct feedback from their customers. What we found is most of them, most of their customers haven't been afraid to give feedback mainly to their sales teams uh, or to the customer service team. Um, so I think that so far that's been the most helpful. Um, but you can do a couple other things like heat mapping just to see it in, just in general what parts of the site are just getting more traction to besides regular Google Analytics. Oh, I, I just yelled out. Yep. So uh, how, do you, how does their current state of operations affect your industry? How does their current state of operations affect our MVP? Yep. Yep, that's a great point. So that is uh, essentially a lot of the back and forth we do in the discovery is a lot of times uh, the MVP still ends up being, well, what are your customers doing today? Let's make sure they're not losing that. And kind of two things happen there is um, when we go into and looking at some of those features and functions is uh, we typically get the, I guess, the complex explanation to what it is, and that's when we kind of go through and try to solution for the simpler one, and uh, either if we try to compromise or sometimes ask them if there's things they can take on from their end in terms of a business process that uh, then doesn't affect uh, any development for the, for the site. Yeah, thank you. Hey, um, so I get, I get the, the advantage from a customer point of view, so faster time to value and, and also lower investment uh, to get to the MVP, but in the past I've seen a lot of implementation uh, service companies, um, they had a different goal, they wanted the large projects, yeah? so isn't it this approach hurting yourself as a, as a company? No, that's a, that's a great question. Um, not for us, and, and the biggest reason is, uh, again, those, some of those projects that uh, could be longer, I think, hurt the relationship um, and strain it a lot more, um, the ones where that, that, uh, that goal live date keeps getting pushed out and pushed out. And what we notice is at the end of the day, um, after goal live, I mean, the big thing is that iteration. So uh, we still work with our clients, and so the, uh, essentially that means, I mean, we still have work after that that site goes live, and honestly, a lot of work, because um, at, at that point, uh, uh, we have a growing list of backlog that we kind of work with them on to, to refine. So yeah, we haven't really seen it hurt us at all, and, and honestly, it's kept the relationship in a, in a really good place.
Anybody else? All right. Well, that's it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for your time.